crafty friends. This is the Paper Chef here. Welcome to part two of my Irresistible Blooms workshop series. In this series, we work with the Irresistible Blooms work uh, stamp set, should say. It is a cling stamp set, so it's a rubber stamp set. Lots of detail. A couple of these are already mounted onto blocks. And we work with the dies, which happen to have the same name. Let's find the package. I finally found my dies. Well, here are a couple of them that are out of the package. So let me just pull a few out right here and look for the package. It's amazing how something was here just a minute ago. And I think this might be it. Here we go. So these are the Irresistible Bloom dies. Look how beautiful these dies are. Now, these, these they were going to be available April 17th. So maybe, Janet, if you can check if they're available now. I'm not sure. Sometimes things come early on at Stampin' Up. Well, I should say late because they're already, they were here and then they, they this is an online exclusive. They became available and then they went on back order status or whatever it's called. Anyway, lots of little, and there's a couple more dies too. Like here are the dies. They cut out the stamps. They cut out beautiful leaves. Okay, so that's what we're working with in this series, just the bundle. Now, the other things you get if you purchase my kit, let's put some of these here. I always have a really awesome, like, epic workshop kit. I gave everybody 12 sheets of this, and it's a good thing I hoarded some because this also became unavailable. It's called Hello Irresistible Designer Series Paper. The coordinating colors are, and the reason I'm reading them right now is because we're going to use some of them. Daffodil Delight, that's the color we're going to make our flower tonight in this card. The flirt, Flirty Flamingo, that's the color of our card base left over from last week. I'll probably, at the end, go back over how we got this embossed piece. Lost Lagoon, that's the embossed piece I put in your kit. Petal Pink, that's this color sort of that we're going to use for the ink. It's the color like that I like to use a lot for shading. And Pretty Peacock, that's a new color, or not new, but a returning color coming back. And Soft Sea Foam, that's this really nice light green color. So that's what the colors are. And I just got a little bit of ink on my thing. So we, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna use this piece. I'm like, So I'm gonna save time by using the piece I've already embossed, but I'll go back over this. For those of you that are diehard that likes to stick around to the end, that's when I show my projects. The projects I've been making throughout the series and projects I've made through my make and takes and things. But right now I'm gonna just show you how to make this card and then we'll go over the measurements. Then I'm gonna go back and show you how I got this piece and how we embossed it with another product called I'll just tell you the product now. Basics 3D Embossing Folders. So that's what I used to do that. So we'll do that again. And we will die cut out the shape for the frame that we used in part one. And I'll show you that again. But let's just kind of get into the heart of it. We're going to use Label Me Lovely. I, I tend to, when I'm using a punch, and this punch is one of those punches that's not going to be around for very long, if it's still even available now. Honestly, I haven't even checked the website. I've had family here. Happy Easter, everybody. I've had family here helping me do the catalog mailings and things. And my, fam my mom's been helping me. My niece has been helping me. My nephew actually helped me. I mean, I, lot, I, it was like a family affair. So what I like to do, so this, this is a punch that's on the last chance sale list. It's fantastic. I mean, look at this cool shape. So I'm just punching out a few. And then what you do is you can, you can then put the sentiment on them later. Now, I tend to punch them out first. That's just my... My habit, not only because I put them in kits and save them and put them in my bucket of crafty goodness, but for several reasons. I like to ink before I stamp. So let's see if I can find that little, I'm looking for like a little silicone mat. Here's more dyes. Dyes, dyes everywhere. I, I have not gone anywhere. I, I have not moved anything. And like things are just missing. Missing in action. I mean, I don't think they're really missing. I think they just might have got buried or something. So let's look in here again. All right, it's okay. We'll just use this piece here. Well, this, it's okay. It's flat enough. So, and then I can just wipe it up with a baby wipe. I like to use my silicone mat, though. We are going to take the petal pink and ink around before I stamp the sentiment on something. Okay. So let's put the petal pink there, and I'm going to go ahead and put some light on the situation here. Put this, turn up the light. Oh, that's as high as the light will go. OK, 
Okay, what I'm going to do is put a little bit of ink on this stamping block. And then I'm going to take my mini blending brush. And I'm just going to go ahead and ink around the edges. This is I'm just doing this for dimension. Okay? And you can also you can also like sort of after you get some ink on there, you can tap to get your first blob off. Oh yeah, that's nice. So it's not so dark. But if it is, just kind of equal it up and do the other side dark as well. So anyway, I like to do this before I stamp my sentiment on it. Now, otherwise, if I was not doing this inking around the edges, I would then stamp my sentiment. And then what I would do is I would I would center my sen sentiment in here to get to make sure it's perfectly centered. So that's what I would normally do. But since I'm inking around it first, that's it works better for me to do it this way. Ink around the edges first, then do the sentiment. Because if you try to ink around the edges with the sentiment on there, you could smear your sentiment. And I already just smeared it with my hand. You could see, smeared. All right, but that's okay. That's when you just flip over. Flip it over because it's a punch, right? It doesn't matter. I just like to put a little bit of ink on my stamping blocks to control how much ink is on there. Oh, I got more smear, smear, smear. There we go. I'm just going to use, I'm just wiping it up from the mat. Okay, we're going to do this fester. Fester, fester, fester. So it doesn't smear. I'm going to wipe it on my shirt. Yes, I do. I wear t-shirts. Wipe it on there. All right, so that's good. So I'm happy with that. And we got two good ones because we might make, mm, we could try more than one card. All right, so now let's say that's the only time we're going to use Petal Pink for this whole thing. So let's close that. Oh, look, I found my silicone mat after all. It's, I found not just one, but two of them. They were under my baby wipes. I have my Huggies wipes here, and they were under that. That's why I didn't see them. I'm like, I haven't gone anywhere. I haven't moved anything. It's like, how do they disappear? So anyway, now I can clean up this little bit here. Because I'd rather use this to work on. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to get the thank you stamp out and we're going to use basic black. So we're going to we're going to put it like that. It's not called basic black, it's called memento tuxedo black ink. So we want one to take the stamping black. Okay, I'll just grab this one here which stamping block H. By the way, prices of stamping blocks are going up. If y'all haven't taken advantage of the last chance sale, highly recommend it. Let me just get a piece of paper here to stamp on. Because the last chance sale. Oh no, this isn't even last chance sale. The blocks are gonna be around, but they're just going up in price. They're actually in the next catalog. If you want stamping blocks, I should say, or you want something from the last chance sale, then you wanna get it now before May 2nd, before the catalog goes live. Because when it goes live, any new prices, price increase, boy, this needs ink, doesn't it? I need to re-ink this guy. But you know what? It's because my note paper is also really cheesy. That is probably not sticking on there very well. I'm gonna use my messed up one and see if I can get a good stamp. Because I think it's, I think it was my paper. Oh yeah, see, that's a good stamp. So let's go ahead and put this on there. It's, it's, it's a matter of like having the right kind of paper. You have better ink absorption when you use Stampin' Up! Basic White cardstock for one. And two, after you stamp your first few test stamps, then you get better ink, better ink on, your, on your things. And then also what you can do, if you're still not getting good ink absorption, you can re-ink your, re your stamping pad, which I'm not doing right now because... I still haven't found my re-inkers. I'm still looking for them. I'm not going to buy all new re-inkers. I bought some for the new stuff. So here's another trick, though. So that one looks pretty good, but this one has a few little empty spots in it. So what you do is you take this little stamping marker. I'm just using the, the tiny side. It has a brush side and a tiny side, and you can sort of go in there with the basic black marker and fill in any gaps. And if you're daring... 
You may want to use the brush side because this font is a brush font. That's good enough, though. I mean, this is good enough for what we're doing. See, I could go like this. But then I would have, I could totally, if I, if that's a big brush side, I could totally lose it, you know. And you can also brush your, brush your stamp. So one other trick I should have shown you is, say you stamp, and then you can, like, brush over it, any parts you missed with this, with this marker. All right, so now we have that. So now the next step is, we have that whole part done. We're not going to do our design search paper for a little bit. We're going to do our frayed ribbon. Okay, let's put that here. And I only have a piece of ribbon left because I put it all in kits. That's why I had to stop. I had to stop at that kit. I had a lot more demand than I had supply for this kit. <laughs> so I've already started this side of it. So you have, this is my last piece of white frayed ribbon. I think it's retiring too. So I might have to get some more of this too. Still waiting on my other order. So I don't want to get anything else yet until I kind of really see what I have. And I don't like, I'm not one of those people that like, like pulling out my, my inventory papers to see what I have. I like, or, or my order summaries. I like to take it out of the box and actually see what I have. So I'll know what I get when I do my unboxing. And then I'm like, maybe I did get this ribbon. So what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to get that little thread. Okay, so what you're doing is you're going to get the threads out. This thread that goes... Well, because I'm laying the ribbon horizontally, you want to get the this piece out that's vertical. And it's you need to get it out like the whole, the whole way. And then you could fray your ribbon. So it does come out like in one string... Like, this one was all one string. Check this out. Ooh, la, la. You're going to love this. It just comes out so smooth. You just go like that. I don't want to keep fraying it because that's enough. But the ribbon is called... Let's just let's just cut this piece and stop here. I got enough fray on this end here. Okay, so when you're all done fraying, just stop fraying and kind of do that. But what, it's called the white frayed ribbon. And the reason it's called frayed ribbon is because you can fray it like this. And I think it just makes a really nice background for your punches and dyes and things. It makes it 3D. So just kind of like to get this off, I'm just kind of pulling them out. I'm kind of, you could have pulled it out in one string, but I'm just going to kind of pull them out like that manually just to get the job done. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. It's usually not this sloppy, but I'm on my last piece, so we are going to be a little bit sloppier. Okay, good. So you just want to fray it until you get an even amount. It looks like we have two more rows or one more row at least. Let's get that row out of there. Like I said, when you pull it all, it'll pull out in one string, but I'm I'm in a hurry. Oh, it's so cute. Okay, I'm happy with that. So now you're going to put that, you're going to flip this over. Get some, you know, your seal plus. And just go like that, right? And then what I do is I put this down. That way I can center the piece. All right, do I like that one better? Oh, that one's okay. That one's okay. Let's say center. Okay, and now you can, and then you can pop it up on dimensionals if you want. I think I did pop it up on dimensionals. So at this point, you can put dimensionals on the top and bottom. We'll also just do the same thing with some other ribbon because I don't have any more frayed ribbon. All right, well, we don't have anything to do with this yet. We can put it, we can put it on here. We could do that. Oh, no. No, no, no. I just smeared my thing. All right, we're going to put this up here so I don't smear it. I don't know where the black ink came from because I didn't think I touched anything to that, that page. I'm a hot mess. All right, let's just use this to see what's on there just to push down on. So I don't smear it again. All right, good, good, good. I'm just keep wiping my hands and I still keep getting blobs of ink on everything. But it's only paper, remember. Only paper. Never sweat the little things. All right, so we'll do that. I'm just going to use this to push down on it because I don't want to smear anything else. Ooh la la. Now, last week I showed you this card and it was not, all I had done was this and I liked it a lot. I already liked my card, but I was like, oh, it needs some flowers, and it needs some leaves. And I added all these things since last week. I added I added all these leaves and flowers, and we're going to be doing some die cutting and things. So that is the basic part of your card. And now we're going to open up. Let's do some die cutting. I'm going to open this up. So I got the die cutting stampin' emboss machine. Let's go like this. 
raise this up so you can see it. That's the front of it. We'll show you the sandwich. The die cutting sandwich that is, which consists of the base plate. I was like, where are my base plates? Upside down. So we're gonna put this on there. All right, that looks like, what is on there? All right, good, good, good. Flip that around. So you have your base plate. Okay, you have now your thin die adapter. That's what you're gonna put next. Whenever you have thin dies, you need to put that adapter. It's not called a thin die adapter, it's just called plate number two. And it should be right around here. Okay, here's a plate number two. Okay, then you have a plate number three. That's, and you're gonna use one of the plate number threes that's scratched as your next part of your sandwich when you do thin dies. And then next thing you're gonna do is a top plate number three. Or you can use another plate number three. Or if I just have something small to cut, you can go ahead and get your plate from your mini machine, which would be called a plate number two, and use that instead. It doesn't really matter, they're both the same. But sometimes if I'm, I'm just using my thin, my smaller plate, if I don't have a lot to cut. So what do we need to cut? We need to make ourselves a flower. I've already made one, just in case I totally smear the heck out of this. We have a backup plan, but I wanna show you, like when, in my tutorials, I like to show you everything from start to finish. So let's go here and let's do that. Let's make the flower. So we're gonna go here and we're just gonna look at this has already been inked up and everything. Now I can show you that brush technique here. So it looks pretty good, but say it wasn't all the way inked up and I haven't been using it. You can go like this with the brush, like your, see, isn't it nice? You could do this to just color your, your stamps, many different colors too. You can use your markers. So I love using my markers as, as a supplement to my ink pads. Okay, hold it there for a few seconds and you have a beautiful flower. Now what you wanna do is you wanna get your die that matches that. So there's a die. So here's the die like this. Ooh, wow, couldn't it have landed that better if I tried. It landed right in the same spot, but you turn it, make sure it lands in the same spot. And then you're gonna take a little piece of painter's tape. I'm just using painter's tape. Let me, this is kind of strong, this painter's tape. So I'm gonna just kind of use, get a little bit of lint, lint off my t-shirt. Okay, so here's my t-shirt, right? I'm getting a little bit of lint off my t-shirt so that this doesn't rip my paper. So you wanna put that on there like so. And now it doesn't slip and move when you're die cutting. So back to that die cutting sandwich. We had our base plate number three and put that down and now you can use like I said, another plate number three, or just your, in this case, I just use the, the small die because I don't need to cut much. So to me, the smaller die just makes my life a lot easier. Crank it through. And that is, that is the, how you die cut. I mean, it's as simple as that. And you could also use a stamparatus, which is too bad, so sad. That's all gone now that we've ran out of, we sold out of those but you could cut yourself, another way to do it is cut yourself a bunch of blank shapes and then use the Stamparatus Stamp Positioning Tool to stamp the flower onto all those shapes. All right, while we're here, let's see what else we can do while I have the machine. And I'm gonna take out my bucket of crafty goodness. We're gonna look at my card to see what we need here. We have the flower, there we need the flower, we need these little guys, and we need those little guys. So what we're gonna do is find the piece of paper, a piece, like, here's a good piece, just finding pieces of paper that have these leaves on them. Okay, so here's a good one. I mean, any any pieces. There's a bunch of pieces that have it on it. If you missed my overview of what's in this... I don't think that's the right one. I think it's this one. If you missed my overview about this whole pack of paper, I went over all the papers in the first video. So what I'm going to do is line up two pieces of paper at once. Let's be efficient here. The paper, the patterns are exactly the same. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a piece of painter's tape. Let's use the same piece. Let's put these flowers off to the side. And you're gonna go like this. You want these to be exact or they slip pretty easily. And just put the painter's tape around the side. Don't put it anywhere where you're gonna be die cutting. Like right here, there's no flowers to die cut. So that's, okay. I mean, uh, leaves to die cut. So now it's pretty good, it won't slip. Still got the same sandwich. And you're going to take this little guy and this little guy and cut out shape. So am I stocking up on this paper? Absolutely. Do I love flowers? Not, I mean, I do love flowers. I love nature, but I'm saying I like this set. I like this suite. I'm not real into flowers, but when you have paper that matches your dyes and flowers that have this beautiful font 
and beautiful flowers you can color with the blends. I'm into this kind of flower, totally into this kind of flower. Uh, so this is this is my kind of set, and I'm going to stock up on this paper because it's part, it's like anytime you can get a good bang for your buck where you can cut out things with the dyes and look at all the nice shading. Don't put these too close together. Look at that one. They'll over, they can overlap and, and they can totally bounce. Okay, so Kathy's talking about the other dye, and I did use your suggestion, Kathy, because my viewers are always telling me things. So Kathy, who's also my swap buddy, she told me about the tiny little dye that I had didn't even notice was in there. It's kind of like the ignored little dye. Look at that. You can cut this little dye out. You can cut these. And what she's talking about is, look how cute that is. When you cut the flowers out of this paper, there's a cute little dye that cuts this out. And I've used that on some of my cards. I'll show you. So anyway, that's how you do that one. And then again, let's just use our little plate. And now we need some of these leaves too, but we can't get them out of here because it's kind of too busy and I need it for other things. So what you do is you take, okay, let's, let's just look at this for a second, what we need, why we're here. Because we don't want to waste you know, time. We can cut some of these flowers. Okay, we need to do this card, we're going to need some pieces. Okay, I'm looking for the piece with the little polka dots on it. It looks like a little splat. Here it is. That's my background piece. Okay, now because that's my background piece, bear with me here for a second. We're going to go ahead and cut some of these out of the middle of it in a minute because then, right, we can, it won't matter because we're not going to see that, okay? So that's, that's what we can do. And I'm also going to take this scrap and do the same thing. So let's first use the scrap. I always say never waste a good little crank through the machine. We're just going to. I'll just do one because I don't know how big my little plate is. In a minute, I might see that it covers more. Okay, that's good. We could do another. So we have to find the other dies that are like that. So, oops, more ink getting all over me. Let's just see. These are, these are so beautiful. Let's put those over there. All right, any of these will do. So you want to take any of these little pieces and make your little leaves out of them. As many as you can. See, so while you're here, you could do, I mean, however many your little plate will cover. I don't know if my little plate will cover any more than that. That there's a bunch of those little dies. Uh, close enough. Let's just take one away. All right. Good, good, good. Like it. I like it a lot. All right. So there we go. And let me look at the card one more time and see if we have enough. We have three. We have enough, but let's go ahead and do... Did you hear that? It just went flying out the back. Reach over there. Hey, you probably heard jingle, jingle, jingle. Okay, so that to get the dies out, I mean, is that fantastic or what? We have all these pieces that go through the two pieces of paper. You could do up to three pieces of paper at once. So that's awesome. Okay, just save your tape, use it again. Oh, and this little guy. Okay, let's see. Was this what Kathy was talking about on this page too? I didn't even notice until now, but let's go ahead and do this little die. Oh, yes. You can use the little die on this piece of paper too. This is the gift that keeps on giving. And not only that, I can get this paper because it's six by six and it's so easy to ship later as prizes and, it, and it's like so great to have that paper. Because like when you try to ship 12 by 12 paper for a designer shared paper share, you just can't. You have to kind of make, oh, and see what I'm doing now? I'm just pulling out the insides. You can't ship it. We can ship it, but it costs a lot more. So I always end up cutting it into six by six. And so it's good to have six by six paper anyway. So I'm just going to go ahead and put all these leaves down there for a moment. We have everything we need. I'm just, then I take all my leftover. So you could take your leftover tape. So let's just see. If they don't come out, go like this. See, like this one didn't come out. So you can bang it like that. Or you can take your, take your pick tool. And you can take your little pointy side of the take your pick tool and you can go like that and you can pull out the little guy that way. So this is your take, I just call it, you, can, you might have heard me call it the pokey tool. All right, so now let's, while these are out, let's take our trimmer and cut something for a moment just so we know exactly what part we can. So take all these and just take your extra tape like this and you can clean up that way or reuse your tape again. So reuse your tape to either clean up or reuse your tape to retape something else. All right, so now what you're going to do is like, let me take out my trimmer. I'm going to take, we know that this piece needs to be, the whole thing is gone. Where'd you go? All right, 
have no fear. We put the trimmer back together very easily like so. Okay, we're gonna make it this, this is the normal size of an A2 card base. We're gonna go flip it around. I wanna, I wanna have that. Wait, maybe, maybe that side will be okay. Four by five and a quarter. So then we're gonna cut the insides out of it. So four by five and a quarter. We'll write this down later. But now we take these piece, this piece here, put it right there. And this is what I recommend before you make, before you use this as a card background. Save yourself you know, some, some paper by making something out of the ones that you're going to be using for your cards. So roll that through. Now we have some more of those, which is awesome. And there goes, I heard a little jingle. Something fell down back there. All right. And you can, oops, that guy went down there. Poke these guys out. All right. And now I can just put the machine away and we might use it again later. We'll see what the time the time allows us. All right, now we're gonna just, I'm just gonna toss this aside and close up shop here so we can move on to the next thing. All right, oh, that's what, I knew I heard a jingle, it was that little guy. Putting those over there. So next step is, I have a link to my sticker machine, a bigger sticker machine that my husband had just, like we were just using it for making labels for my my catalog mailing. So let me grab it. I think this is the size I'm, I linked to for you guys. So if you wanna check out this company, pretty cool. Zyron, Zyron, okay? Check that out. The link is in the description of this video. But for now, we're just gonna use this tiny little machine because we only have little leaves to make. Now I could have used adhesive sheets before I die cut as well. And I could have, but I don't, I just have so much of this. It, this is like a newfound thing. I have so much of this sticker rolls that I just found when I was cleaning my, she said. So I think this might be the better tool for the job, but it just, you do, do want to use adhesive sheets if you're doing a lot of die cutting. But since I'm like, if you only have a couple little things to die cut and, and make little stickers out of, this might be a good solution for you. It, the adhesive sheets, you do have to cut the little piece you need. And I use those all the time and you do have those. So please use them. They're in your kit. I shouldn't have wasted so much. These I'm going to puff up with dimensionals. Shouldn't have wasted so much adhesive. You only have to get it to poke in there a little bit. Right? And then once it goes in, you don't have to... Like, you don't have to wait for so much to come out before you pull it through. I'm turning... You want the, you want the side that's facing up to go in first. I'm just doing one more. There we go. Da, da, da. Okay. And pulling it in. Do, do, do. And then going like that. All right, so now I've shown this with my scan and cut tutorials too. Like when I talked about a few ways to make stickers, you can cut your shapes first with the scan and cut and then make a sticker. You can use adhesive sheets and make a sticker, or you can, you can print and cut onto full adhesive sheets of paper that they sell. And I was using those for my mailing labels as well. So there's just many ways to make stickers. There's no right or wrong way. I mean, we're crafters, right? So give it a good rub. All right, so we have stickers. So now let's do the card. Now we need a little trimmer again, and we're going to get the other piece we need. So we already have this piece, and now we need the inside piece. So let's always take a look at the card as our model to see what we did here. Nope, that's not the card. I'm looking for the card. Oh, by the way, we're using the same piece today. We, we cut out two pieces of Flirty Flamingo last week. So that's what we're using for the card today. Is this other, the other piece of Flirty Flamingo that you cut. That's what we're using. It's amazing, I haven't moved, I've been standing right here. Where'd it go, here we go. We need a piece of that, so let's get the piece, of, let's get our pack of paper again. We need the piece that has all those little cool things on it, like, oh, went right to it, there you go. So now, what I do is I want that one to be a quarter inch smaller than that, so while we had five and a quarter, and make sure you know about your pattern. See, I want the pattern to be horizontal. So while we had five and a quarter for the one, this one's going to be five inches across. In other words, it's going to be a quarter inch smaller. <gasps> I just did it wrong. That's okay. Here, we want it to be three 
It still, it didn't do it wrong. I mean, I did it wrong, but I'm saying I still have plenty of paper there. Three and three quarters, sorry, not five. It's five long, okay? Three and three quarters by five. And let's see if I have a lot of the pink showing. I do have more of the pink showing. We're gonna go like that and flip it around. Sometimes you want different parts of the paper showing. So something like that, something like that. Let's compare. And that is right. I had to guess because just making sure, you know, guessing that that's what I did. All right, so that's what we're going to adhere together. Let's get a sticky note here. I don't have my grid paper, but I have sticky notes. So we'll write that down for you. So we have, uh, let's see, five and a quarter times four. And then we had five times three and three quarters. This is all the DSP. And there's like a little hitchhiker on my... All right, let's mount these together with some Seal Plus like this. I should probably move that rubber thing away because it probably has some unwanted ink all over it. Sometimes this gets... Now on my card, I had the pinker side at the top, but I think I'm gonna make the pinker side at the bottom, like the petal pink side at the bottom because then the yellow's not next to the yellow. Do you see what I mean? Like the yellow will be next to the pink side. I think that will look a little better. Like so. Now before you mount the little puffy emboss piece on this, you need to, you need to put this on a card first. So you're gonna get your piece of flirty flamingo that we did last week. I showed you how to make this card. It's 11 inches, right, by four and a quarter. It's an A2 card. Just look up A2 card. Or look up, no, just go to just go to part one of my series. And we made the card together. We actually made the frame together as well, but I'm going to go ahead and do that part again. But we're not making the card again tonight because my people know how to make the card from part one. And I'm sure a lot of you are new to this channel or to this video, so please subscribe if you like card-making tutorials and all kinds of other fun stuff. But this is... We don't need to keep repeating how to make the card, but we are going to show you how to make the emboss piece because hopefully by now the emboss folders are back in stock. When I first started this series, like almost everything I was showing was not in stock. I don't know. I don't know if it is now either, but it's getting closer to the date where it would be. Now we're going to take that piece I told you about the emboss piece and now we can add that because we didn't want to add it before because it would have been like a little bit too lumpy. So now we can add it. It's always better to do this part while you're kind of it's flat. So we have our nice embossed rectangle. And this is what I showed you last week. I said, look, I like the card the way it is. I said, I'm pretty happy with this thank you card. But I said it needed more. I was thinking bling and then some flowers. But it needed, I mean, look at it. It has a lot more, right? So we, we can have so much fun with this little pieces of crafty goodness. So for these, you just take a little dimensional. And just just start adding stuff to your card. Put that little, just puff them up, right? Go for it. If you're going to do three on one side, do two on the other side, like so. Okay. I mean, look at it just come alive when you do that. Layers upon layers, you're just coming alive. Now I'm going to show you a few ways to color your flowers. Okay, we're going to go ahead and put this down, and I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and move these off to the side, guys, because I'm afraid. <laughs> We might splash some ink on them. So there's a couple ways to color these flowers. And I know some of you purchased the water coloring tools, so I want to show you a little bit about the water coloring tools and a little bit about the blending brush. There's just a few ways to color it. So, hmm, see which one first. And I have, I have this too. So I'm just going to start with, let me, let me open up the ink. So we have Daffodil Delight ink. Okay, and we have our blending brush, and we have uh, what's called the water coloring technique. So I put a little bit of water on here. Thank you. Embossing folders are not available till May 1st. Thank you for looking that up. She's always so helpful. That was Kathy. Put a little bit of water on here. I'm taking a little bit of, I'm taking, we have so many ways we could color this. I mean, countless ways. So I'm just going to kind of show you a couple different ways to color this. We have, these are all Daffodil Delight. I have a Daffodil Delight watercolor pencil. Okay, and you can add the water later, but in this case, I would do a little water before because 
this is not stays on ink and it'll run a little bit. We have a, what's called, a, I have a little brush, little, I have a little aqua painter, but I'm not, I didn't put aqua, I didn't put water in the chamber. Let's just see if I clean this out enough. Okay, so we could do this. We could put a little bit of water. I could put a little bit of ink, right? This kind of ink on my stamping pad with a little bit of water, like so. And I could color, but try not to make it run. This is just a little, this is just for a little emphasis. I'm just giving you different ways to color it. Try not to make it run all over the place with the extra, don't, it'll smear because this is not stays on ink. So that's a little bit of water coloring, or you could use a, like a watercolor pencil. Dip the watercolor pencil in water. Dip it onto your mat a little bit. All I'm trying to do is color these little petal parts. And if you don't dip it into water just a tiny bit, you're going to end up with these like harsh watercolor lines. Ooh, see that? Yike, got a little bit too wet. That one was too dark. I should have tapped it on there. Okay, and if it needs a little bit of water, just go ahead and add the water. It's going to make it darker, but that's okay because I want these parts to be darker. And then the other option is, see, that looks better. The watercolor pencil looks a lot better than the water paint, water painting. The other option is just take your blend blender, blend blend pen. No, it's called Stampin' Blends. I should get the name right. Stampin' Blends. This is Daffodil Delight. Boy, I got to order another Daffodil Delight because look at the frayed end. We're going to use the small end, and you could do this too with it. So bottom line is you're just coloring the, you know, the middle part's dark. All right, so that's that was the thing you're doing. Now you're going to, and you can even do like this little middle part. Next you want to take, you can either take, this is, this is a couple ways to color the outside now. So a couple ways to cut. Oh, see, boy, look at that. It's all messed up. All messed up. It's really frayed. This side, it still colors, but it, my end is frayed. All right, so we're just going to use the smaller side. So I can do this, you know, with the, I could blend the outside with the blend, the blender pen. Don't try to do the outside with watercolor marker because you're going to end up with like a big hot mess with the watercolor marker. Or, and in this case, this is how I'm going to do both of them. I was just showing you different ways. Or you could take your stamping block, add some ink, right? And do that blending technique I showed you earlier. I'm just going to go ahead and, do you see how I colored the outside of it too? So watch this. This is, this is the best way and it looks the best. And you can, you can color the white parts too. See, this is just the best method, I think. But I was just showing you the other methods because maybe you don't have the ink pad or a blender brush. Use a sponge dauber if that's all you have. So I was just showing you a few ways to color your flower. That one looks pretty good. And I think this one's going to be a little better. I'm going to do a little bit lighter. But I just wanted those middle parts to be darker. And then you could go out and then you can make your outside parts a little bit darker as well. So like that looks cute. And then it might look a little cuter. Just go ahead and take your blender pen if you want and just sort of go around a little bit if you want. And you could do it the dark and the lighter. Oh yeah, I kind of like that. Just a little bit of extra, extra something, something. Now, when you do use the dark blend, you should go back over it. Oh, man, these are these nibs are in bad shape. I'm going to go make my wish list again. I got my shaded spruce blends, and I said, you know, it would be a really good idea if I went through all my blends to see which ones are messed up. But then I said, then I'll be spending an absolute fortune, so I'd rather just see them as I go. Like right now, I know I need this color. I'm just going to discover it as I go. Oh, I like that flower a lot better than this flower, just by doing that little bit. Where'd the other flower go? See, that little bit of extra little lines around it with the blend marker looks cool. This one, I didn't do that too. But I did add Wink Costello to the flower. You don't bring me flowers anymore. Okay, I'm putting that ink away and I'm gonna get the Wink Costello and just sort of make some bling bling, you know, glitter, glittery effect on here. How cool are these? And then I have an extra flower made. Well, I, I'm not going to make the card with you, like with the extra flower. We'll do that. I'll just make. I'll just make something with it by the next video. It will go into my bucket of crafty goodness. As you know, I like to have a lot of extra things that to work with. But that little bit of extra sparkle, sparkle. Whoops! Please don't have ink on my mat. Oh, yike! Please, no ink. Okay, good. 
I was hoping it didn't smear black on it, but that little bit of, can you see that Winka Stella? Super cute. So now I'm just gonna take some dimensionals. Let's move this out of the way. Put some on dimensionals on there. Sometimes if you run out of, well, I still have a few big dimensionals, but I like to use the sides of the packages as well. And you all got dimensionals in your kit. So that's fun. And let's go ahead and add this to our card. And you can see how where I added it. I added it right there below on the bottom. And I overlapped it a little bit over the top of the punch. And the punch again is called Label Me. Oh, you saw it. Label Me Lovely. I don't want to touch it with my hand. Let's say we're going to touch it with this. But if you're going to touch it with something else, always check first, right? Go like that. <laughs> you know, check that you're not touching it with something that's going to get more ink on it. And where are our stickers? This is why we made stickers. So we're going to take these beautiful stickers. And we're going to get the lightest ones because Lost Lagoon's a little bit dark. So we're going to get the lighter ones and just shove them under there. And then just get, like, it's like a little booger. <laughs> Hate to say it, but that's what it's like. So it's like a little booger. You got to get this little bit of the adhesive off of the inside. But it sure beats using a fine tip glue pen, honestly, because the glue oozes out when you play with it. So I just find this better than a, a glue pen. All right, and I'm, gonna, I'm just going to get a few different sizes of it. So we'll do one like that. And you just tuck it under there. Sometimes you have to lift it up a little bit to tuck it under. Lift and tuck. Oop, get under there. It'll, when you, when you do make a sticker, you got to rub, right, to get it to stay. Rub it a little bit because this is a bumpy surface. All right, and we are missing only one more leaf because we like to do things in threes. That's just kind of like a design, a design thing. One more leaf, and then there's the other leaf we're going to use, this little... Bendy leaf. Ooh, pretty, pretty. See, this is a big improvement over the one from last week when I had nothing on this embossed piece. So you just keep adding layers. Do as much as you want. You can add more flowers if you want. And then you can add some bling. So I used the, the iridescent rhinestones. These, I gave you all these in your kit. Iridescent rhinestone basic jewels, but you can use your genial gems. Genial gems. How do you say that? Genial gems? Well, those are on clearance, or they were. Those are pretty cool. Or on the last chance list. Anyway, you got to find a spot that doesn't have a big bump on it, right? Because <laughs> these little embossing folders have big bumps on them. I would have made a little bit smaller dots if it was my design, but I mean, it's still pretty cool design. I'm just going to put one there. I'm going to put a little one there. I'm just doing this in threes as well. I'm going to put a big one on top. I'm going to put it right over the top, like sort of where it overlaps. That way that's not on top of bump. These are just extras I had from my kit. So that is how we do it. This is how we do it. So now I'm going to say hello. And there's time because I like to always keep my videos under an hour. And we've only 43 minutes. What I want to do now is say hello. And then I'm going to show you how I made this rectangle here. So you have all the measurements. And then I'm going to show you all the rest of the projects you can make using the Hello Irresistible or actually Irresistible Blooms. So Janet is ready. Okay, Diana's, Diana is here, Diana Boone, hello. And we have Kathy. Oh, she's watching me on her TV. She said I'm larger than life because I'm on her TV. Good thing I don't have uh, my face showing because up on a TV, do you ever see like an actor on their face when they're close up on the TV? It's like, whoa, you can see every little pore of their skin. <laughs> no, not that I would care. Anyway, so. Thanks, Lynn, for being here, Lynn McFarlane. So, hello, Sue from New York. All right, hello, Sha Shaz from the UK, and Lori from Ohio. Punch is still available. Thank you, Lynn, for letting me know the punch is still available. This was on the last chance list. Our punches were like $23 regular, and then the, the last chance list, a lot of them became like half that price, which is pretty cool. I'm just, I'm going to get ready. Like, as I'm talking, I'm just getting my stuff ready to show you the next part. I just got to move some of this water part out of the way. All right, so we have Lori from Ohio and Lisa from Hawaii, aloha. Even though Stampin' Up! says not to mix old ink with new. No, nothing happens if you do anyway, Lynn. I mean, it just, it does get muddy if you do, and they want you to buy all the new stuff as it goes because it's the right chemical formula. It is better not to mix them, but honestly, I've mixed them. And it does get kind of muddy. It's not the best thing, but it's like, it, that's, I mean... You see me, I mixed everything tonight. I mixed a watercolor pencil with an alcohol pencil with a water-based ink. I mean, I've mixed three different mediums. I mean, 
nothing happens, but it does run. I mean, you have to worry about the different things running together and not reacting nicely. And it is always better to get the new inker, re-inker when you buy the new stamp set. So nothing happens though. And there's no like stamping up police telling you you can't mix inks together, right? Hello, Brooke from Plant City. I wonder where Plant City is. What state is Plant City in? I guess you like these plants then, right? All right, a teeny dye. We talked about the teeny dye. A, co a Kokomo, a Como Crafts, hello? All right, a ruin machine by not seeing a circle dye. Yeah, she said, be careful about the machine, CRS 949, because that little dye that was in my machine, you have to watch if these get stuck in there. They, they have a problem. Okay, waiting for Zany Zoo tutorial. Well, Lynn, I don't have my Zany Zoo yet. I am going to do Zany Zoo, but another workshop series. I don't even have my, I don't have my pre-order yet. I did order it on April 4th, and apparently it was the biggest sales day of Stampin' Up's history. That's what Brian, our guy that's like in charge, he said. Biggest sales day of Stampin' Up history. So my order is still not even shipped yet. Like not only do I not have it yet, it hasn't even shipped yet, but I got my catalogs because they ship from somewhere else. Like they're shipped from a printing company, I think. So anyway, I don't have my Zany Zoo, so you're going to be waiting a long time for the Zany Zoo tutorial. Maybe next month we'll start that. I'm hoping. I just got to see what it looks like first. All right, embossing photos we talked about. Hello, Midge. I hope you got your catalog, Midge. Hello, Elaine from Utah. All right, what I'm showing you now is I'm going to take a Fabulous Frames die and show you how I got the rectangle. This is Fabulous Frames. I hope they're still available. These were on the last chance list. These are fantastic dies. Look at these things. I haven't used these ones, but I've used all four of these. And I love how this, you're going to see what I did with the frame for part one when I show you part one. So what I did is I took some, I gave you all some Lost Lagoon, which is pretty cool. It's, it's Lost Lagoon is one of the returning colors. And this is Lost Lagoon. I, I don't have it yet from the new order. This is, I have this yet from years ago. It's a color that is coming back. Okay, one ship today, Lynn. I'm gonna go check on my shipping after this. I did get on and chat with them. I had a little chat with the demonstrator support to try to figure out what the status was, but she said it says picking. I'm like, well, I could have told you that, but anyway, we will be positive. Let's pray that it got shipped today. Anyway, what I'm doing is I'm cutting one of the fabulous frames, and I'm gonna show you how cool that is, how it comes out with this extra little rectangle. And then what I decided to do is give you all a frame and give you all the rectangle from the inside. Okay, Sun City, Florida. Hello, Tina from Sun City, Florida. Okay, so here it is, cool, right? So this is the frame, and you're gonna tap it or poke it out with your pokey tool. Let's get this. That one's stuck on me. Okay, we're gonna poke this out. So now, see how this embossed? Isn't that cool? So the, the die embossed and stitched and did the whole nine yards. So I gave everybody a frame, and you're gonna see how that looks on the card that we made in part one. Now, I told you I would show you part two again, So, because uh, I, wanted, I wanted to leave no stone unturned. When I teach, I like to show you the whole big picture, but I also am aware of your time. So now to do what's called a three, to use a 3D embossing folder, you gotta ditch this whole sandwich. You're still gonna use this part of the sandwich, plate one, but we're not using this and we're not, we're not using this at all. We're just using plate one, which is, I call the base plate. Then you're gonna use the basics 3D embossing folders, which will be available May 1st. According to Kathy, she looked at the inventory supply. But you all have a piece like this I already embossed for you. We're going to take this piece. I put it stamping side up, stamping up side up, I should say. And then you can see how there's other patterns. So cool. I gave you one other pattern in your kit. So my kits are a labor of love because I do those extra little things for you, like emboss pieces for you so you can have cards that are quick to make. So I'm just going to put this in the embossing folder, shut it. And now you're going to use what plate number four, introducing plate number four. So when you use the 3D embossing folders, not every embossing folder, just the 3D ones, you need plate number four. And that is how we got our cool embossed piece that I used on the card today. And now I'm gonna show you my projects after I make a little space here. Just making sure there's no ink laying around to get all over my new projects or my old projects. Dun dun dun. So that's why it's 3D. It's a very deep folder. It's deeper than the regular embossing folders, and it, that's why it's called a 3D embossing folder. And so you can, you can see the other side would have been cool as well. So there you go. That's how we did it. Okay, so now let's take out the basket of crafty goodness. 
So if you missed part one, here it is. This is what we made using the frame. And we used, you know, go ahead and check out those measurements because we did a thin side. We did a very small edge. See, like we, we did an eighth of an inch there. And then we did that extra eighth, like we did this very close to the edge of the card, eighth of an inch, this tiny bit of that paper, which is called Pretty Peacock, I think, that color kind of sticking out back there. It's a little bit of Lost Lagoon, too. And then with the flower, we put the flowers in a frame, and we used a punch that was on the last chance sale list. And I'm sure it's... Ooh, I hope I didn't get pen on that card. Yay, I didn't get pen on the card. It is the last chance sale list. It's called the Rectangular Postage Stamp Punch. So that's how we did that. And then these I colored with just a blender, these little leaves, soft sea foam. Fabulous frame, still available, 1860. Awesome, 1860. So there's a reason to get those. I mean, I would just get them just for this frame. If I were to get, well, I mean, the bonus of having a frame and a rectangle. If you don't even like the other frames, that's worth it right there. Boom. An embossed frame and a rectangle that you can do whatever to every time. Instant cards. Hello. All right, now I want to show you what I made with, I'm going to show you all the rest of my cards now. These I made with, the, in our team, we have something called a make and take tutorial. So Jennifer, who's in charge of all that, sent me all the pieces and I was just able to follow along with those. I just put all the pieces together and made all these cards. So you can just do so much with this. Okay, this is, these were called the tailor-made tags dies. Last year we did a whole workshop on this. So many of my crafty friends have the tailor-made tag dies. They're, they're stitched and they're just great for crafting. Okay, and here's just one way you can use that nice element that we'll be using a lot in this series. These cards were the first two cards I just showed you. Rectangular postage stamp punch is still available for only $11.40. So if you want to buy anything you're seeing tonight, just use the link in my description, paperchef.stampinup.net. Here, I actually have the little sticker. I'll show you the sticker because I'm almost done here. Dun, dun, dun. And these were online exclusives, the things I'm showing you now. The stamp set's available. There you go. Whoops. Well, that doesn't stick worth a darn, does it? All right. I'll just go like that. All right, so anyway, back to these. These were petal pink. Petal pink backgrounds. So these I made, they're called Make and Takes, Team Make and Takes. So one of the main, one of the, one of the perks of being part of our team my team is called the Paper Chefs, and we all belong to a team called the Beehive. One of the many perks is that we do team swaps, we do team make and takes, and we just we just support each other in so many ways. It's so fun being part of a team, and I met so many friends through Stampin' Up. All right, this one I'm calling the Designer Series Paper Card. This one I showed you last week. I showed you just the panel. I said I really love this paper and how you can put the leaves going in all different directions. And not only... All right, this is paper cool because, as you know, we just cut all these leaves out of this paper, right? Look how cool that paper is. But you can also make it into a panel card. I call this a panel card or a DSP card. So the question is, which card, this or that, will do best out of three? This or that, would you like to make next? This or that? And this is just a card I made with that shape. And I've been trying to avoid using the big dies, you know, because I know a lot of you don't have your dies yet. But this one you can make just without the dies because you could literally just cut all this with designer series paper and cut these flowers out with a pair of scissors. So that's a designer series paper card, and this is a card that we rely heavily on a couple of the dies. Okay, and then so these are just examples. So we'll see what the best set of three votes are, and that's what we'll do next. All right, this or that. This meaning the left, and the right is the that. This or that. And now these are just ones I made with the designer, the uh, basics 3D embossing folders again. And we do have some of this in your kit, this gilded or naturally gilded or something like that designer series paper. That's pretty cool paper. Uh, this, this is one of those I used a lot because I think it looks like starfish I used a lot with the Seaside Bay. All right, we got it. The vote is for this. So we're going to do this first. It's not that we're not going to make that. We're just doing this next. <laughs> it's like, who's on first, right? All right, let me just write this down. We're going to still do the other. We're just not doing it yet. We're going to do part three. We'll do the other one either part four or a later date. See, we're still doing it. We're just not doing it yet. We'll still do it. We'll do something like that. 
Or we'll do something like this one too. It, we, but some kind of combination, we'll be using these frames. I know for sure I'm gonna use these frames for the shaker card. So maybe the shaker card will be part four where we use this frame. Okay, this was using a couple of the sentiments. Okay, here's another one using that. Oh, this is the one I showed you before. This, what I was trying to say is in the seaside bay, I thought this looked like sea stars or starfish. So that's why I use that background a lot with the nautical theme. Okay, this one is using that little piece of paper I sent you or the little embossing folder. And I sent some of you guys a piece of petal pink or a different colors of this that were embossed. Little pieces that we can put behind it for our card elements. Okay, and then we'll make in a card similar to this as well, where we use the vertical piece. This is actually, believe it or not, one whole piece. And it, you can, it's kind of hard to keep it all together, but when you make it a little bit shorter to put on a card, and you got to use a lot of glue, but it's pretty cool to use that for an element. So I used this one, I used the gilded, or is, what is it called? Gilded, gold, gilded, or something. I forget what it's called. <laughs> but there was some really cool paper. And then this one, but we have some, we have some metallic paper in your kit and different things that we can use to sort of make some of these elements and little frames and things. So these are just all examples of what you can do with this Hello Irresistible using my style. You know, everyone else has a different style, so you might see totally different cards online with people doing more watercoloring. We'll do some watercolor washes for the backgrounds and we'll do a shaker card. I thought at first I was gonna do a shaker card with this little guy, but then I used it for that card and now you have this piece left, or you don't have this piece left, you have this die and we can easily make, I think, a shaker card. I'm going to try it. I thought that would be a neat shaker card background. Okay, so thank you all for watching. This is the Paper Chef. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Hello, Phil. I got one, two, three, four, five votes, and four were this, and one was that. So that's why we're doing this card next. <laughs> all right. Have a great night, everybody. See you real soon.